What is up, you bunch of the sh little piece of lint, bitch. I got, I got a bone, bone to pick, pick with you. you. Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of Play Dead. Uh, hi, we're not playing guitar today, <laughs> obviously. Uh, if you've never been here before and you're just finding this video because the title either infuriated you or made you laugh, hi, I'm Davey. Yeah, this is me. Please subscribe, like the video, <laughs> unless it terribly upsets you. It's it's okay. It's okay. Um, so before we get into anything today, today is my today is my TED Talk. Okay, we're gonna have a little chat about something that I've I've kind of wanted to make a video about for a long time. So I uh I, I've I've wanted to talk about this really since I met, started making content uh focused around the Grateful Dead and you know um parallel to in 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 canon with but I've I've wanted to talk about this because I think it's something that every deadhead uh or grateful dead fan or is fucking wook or you know uh trail kid fucking rain rain ro range rover trail uh rail riders and hula girls and glow stick fairies whatever whatever it doesn't matter everybody's dealt with some some form of like this toxic fandom right i think that everybody has to deal with it before we get into it you're like who the fuck is this this fucking dready fucking nerd my name's davy Right, and I've been playing Grateful Dead music and Jerry Garcia music, Bob Dylan, blah blah blah, all that, all that stuff. I've been playing it for half my life now. I'm almost 31. I've been playing this music kind of seriously since I was 15. Uh, just so you can have my bona fides, I'm in three uh, Grateful Dead tributes that you probably have never heard of: uh, Tennessee's Dead, Chance in the Void, and Saint Owsley. Uh, Saint Owsley is a Jerry tribute, and I, I've been in those for you know Tennessee's Dead about uh eight years now um i've been in chance in the void for three years and saint alzi is about a year and a half old um but before that you know i've been playing this music uh, i was homeless from the time i was 16 to 21 and i never begged for money on the street i played guitar for it so i would play guitar and sing and my business partner and channel partner toby and i would play our own songs as well as grateful dead jerry songs bob dylan songs play those on the street as we traveled around the country in effect like living some of the parts of these songs that we all love dearly right so there, there are some aspects of it that I definitely um feel like I owe my life to because there are definitely like lower moments in my life that I I owe to this music there are definitely things that uh that have kept me going uh, when I needed them the most. Certain things would just kind of like pop in my head, certain words, certain phrases, certain uh, uh, melodic lines to, to bring me back from utter destruction, right? I've also been teaching Grateful Dead songs on YouTube for about three years now, uh, since, uh, since the old uh, Rona, the old, uh, the old Rhinitis, Rhinosauceritis, right? Uh, so as soon as that started, I started doing the lessons and um, it's basically been my job ever since that and doing the live streams where I play Grateful Dead songs every Friday night. I, I'm within the world enough to feel like I can have an opinion about it, you know? <laughs> I, I'm in the kind of like coliseum, if you will. I'm in the, the lion's den of uh, this like not, not only the beauty of Deadhead fandom, but also like the cesspool toxic nature of a... Kind of, kind of an echo chamber, echo chamber, right? It becomes this kind of echo chamber where you can just kind of fart smell, right? And that's not, that's not about the music. That's about you. That's about you and your ego, right? So um, before we get into anything like super heavy, let's, let's go over a little bit of like the history, right? So the Grateful Dead, if you don't know who the fucking Grateful Dead are, who are you? What planet are you from? Right? They were they're like the biggest drug uh, drug band on the planet uh, that has ever been. So it's like you got the Grateful Dead and that's about it. I mean, you got Fish and now Goose and Billy Strings and you know, Humphreys McGee, you got uh you, you know, you got String Cheese Incident, you've got, you know, Leftover Salmon, you got Mo, 
You got all these other jam bands. You got, you know, widespread panic. You got all these guys, and they all fall under that. But the one you think about is the Grateful Dead. They were the, the big one. They were the big one. They helped start so many uh, sub-genres of music that it's insane. So so the band started in 65, right? The original lineup, you had Jerry. And of course, you had Bobby. You had Pigpen, who was the original front man, right? They were a blues band. They were Pig's band first, right? <laughs> And these three were actually the uh, the really kind of the founding members before the the Grateful Dead, which were the Warlocks at the end of '64, right? They became the Grateful Dead in '65. Before that, they were the Warlocks. Before that, the three of them, Jerry, Bob, and Pigman, they were in a thing called Mother McCree's Uptown Jug Champions, right? And there's even a couple recordings out there of uh, you know a couple of their shows. Uh, so you can go listen to that and and be like, whoa, this is crazy history. It is cool to see the history, but it doesn't. It's not important right so the the original lineup you had jerry bob pig pen bill right and then you had phil that was the original five those are the people that are on the first album and then they brought in mickey and mickey was there from there on out right um so the the band went through many many kind of different like slight iterations like mickey would leave every now and again bob even left the band at one point for a second uh, you had uh after pig pen died or before pig pen died you had tom Con- constanton come in <laughs> uh, you you never know how to you want to say constantine but it's constantin constantin tom constantin right uh and then uh he passed the torch on to uh old keith gotcha gotcho right and then he died right you're noticing a little bit of a pattern here and then brent midland came in and then he died right and then you started just having kind of like a revolving door of like bruce hornsby vince wellnick and you know a couple other people here and there um and that's kind of like the way it was up until 95 when jerry kicked the bucket through the 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 60s and the 70s they just started like picking up this this ridiculous fan base of people of not, who not only like dug the you know the the shows themselves but like really delved into the music itself and this the the culture kind of sprang from that it became this kind of like well not only the it was the drugs it was the drugs you know it was the drugs it was the the lsd it was the mushrooms it was the dmt that was going around like all of this stuff nitrous you know, like there's there's so many things the marijuana marijuana like the all of that kind of added to the scene right and the scene is basically this kind of like again the counterculture this kind of like little bubble in space and time that we've created for ourselves that is hinged on this music and then by proxy the players right um so so everything up through the 70s was all kosher they were they were building this kind of like this snowballing thing where they were just getting bigger and the crowds were getting bigger right and people were getting more devoted and you have these people that like it was kind of unheard of at the time of people literally giving up whatever life they had at home and getting on the road and following this 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 hippie drug band around, right? It was it was unheard of. That hadn't happened yet. And it's been going on for decades. It still happens. It has been happening for over 50 years now, right? This 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 thing that doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon, if I can help it, and if if all these other people out here playing the music can help it right through the 60s and 70s they amassed this following and then you get into the 80s and and you know you with the addition of brent and then uh jerry's health problems 80 81 to 83 very strong but then coma one and then um he was out for a little bit had to come back relearn guitar it happens but something happened in 87 you know what happened in 87 touch gray bitch touch gray happened and then you had this influx because that that was like that that was when they finally made it commercially, right? That was when their song finally fucking played on the radio, right? It, they they finally got what they wanted. They wanted that commercial success for a while. Starting back, uh, they thought that France was honestly going to be their first breakthrough song that got them into the charts, right? But it was Touch of Grey. It's a decade later, Touch of Grey. That was what did it. And that's a great song, but that was the one that got through. And they made the video about it. They also made the video for Hell in a Bucket and yada, 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 right? Something interesting happened. You had this influx of new blood, young blood, come in. Like these kids that were seeing the videos on the MTV and the VH1s and the Much Music, right? They were, they were seeing it and they were taking it in and they were like, oh my God. Oh my God, I love this. And and this does this does kind of reflect today how things have gone right. So so there was that immediate pushback of the older heads 
or the OGs, right, against the touchheads, these these new kids that have come in and they're like, oh shit, drugs, right? And there's always that kind of that yin and yang of of heads that are there for the music and for the show and the experience of the community. And there are those that are there to get fucked up that don't really care about the music. That's always been that. And that's always kind of the way it's probably going to be because like asses in seats, party and drugs, like you, you got party drugs, people are going to come. Right. And that's kind of what like leads into the whole like kind of cult aspect of it too. Cause it's like, is it, you know, is it me that loved this music or was it my brain on drugs? Right. But it, you know, like I, I've listened to the music plenty of times, not on drugs. I still really like it. It's still really good. <laughs> but those those OGs coming at those those touch heads, right? It, uh, you know, now it kind of seems like that was kind of a rite of passage because it seems like everybody gets hated on by the generation before them. Does that make sense? Because now we're in this age of people like you know the them. Well, nobody had really had a problem with like after Jerry died. You know, you had the dead. Um, I believe that was Warren Haynes, right? He was playing playing with the dead at that point. And then you had the other ones. And then you had Rat Dog. And then you had Phil and Friends and Billy and the Kids and Further. And nobody really batted an eye. I mean, like people had people would talk some shit sometimes, you know, but it 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 didn't get as divisive because it seems like the people that had found the dead up until like Jerry's death, right? Were, were they kind of earned their spot, right? Because the stuff with the touch heads kind of chilled out after 87 right you still have people that are like oh i saw this many shows before you were even born you know get fucked grandpa um but it's a very real thing and it's still happening today especially when you've got like them them doing it with because like i was saying after after things chilled out it was really at that 50 right that 50 year anniversary when they brought trey in did people get super vocal and like super hurtful towards trey for doing his thing over the dead and then that second night, you best believe he had more of a Jerry tone and more like more Jerryisms. He fucking he came correct after that. Uh, I still wasn't like the biggest the biggest fan of it because like I, I love fish and stuff, but like you got your you got your tray in my in my dead, and they're different, and so it made it different. And it's not that I don't like things different, but it was the. Yeah, see, like I'm the problem too. That's that's the thing though. Is like everybody that has their own opinion about it is part of the solution and the problem, right? I think it's all about how we <laughs> how we make these things come across. The thing we're seeing now, especially with Dead and, Co- Dead and Company coming in with John Mayer, there's, there's to, to me, that always seemed like, even though you, you see in interviews and stuff that John and Bobby really genuinely have a connection, maybe because they have the same fucking birthday, um, or, you know, there's, there's just something going on between them. They click, right? There's, there's that aspect of it too, where like they asked him to play for that, but also the fact that that's fucking John Mayer and he's going to put asses in seats, which I also totally get, you know, they're getting older and I, you know, this, this summer is their last tour. The summer of 2023 is dead and company's last tour. And I don't know what they're planning on doing after that. What any of them plan to do with the music going forward. I assume Bob probably wants to die on stage. Maybe a few of them do. The The choice was also for money because they want to leave something behind for the people that are going to be here when they're gone, right? So I don't know why you wouldn't like completely commodify your thing and try to sell out and tap out before you're done. You know, it was a way to to get that in. And like, you know, I, I'm probably going to end up, you know, like meeting these people one day. And that's one thing, too, that I've got to like reckon with is like my own kind of like toxicity added into any of this because any time that like I made a video where I've said like nah fuck John or blah 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 this about that like you know I'm I'm more than likely going to meet these people at some point if I keep doing what I do and there's going to be a reckoning right I'm going to have to reckon with those moments and I'm going to have to be like hey you know yeah I, I said those things but you know that doesn't mean I can't like you as a person. And it also doesn't mean just because, and my thing with John Mayer is that not his guitar playing, his guitar playing's fine. He's a great blues player. He's a good guitar player. He's a great guitar player, right? I just don't like his voice. And that's okay. It's okay that that's my preference. I don't put it down people's throat. I'm not telling people that you suck because you listen to Dead and Company because fuck John Mayer. I'll never do that. I want you to listen to this music however you want to hear it. And I want you to play it. That's that's the whole reason I do the Play Dead series. That's why I do this stuff is because I want you out there continuing the music because it's up to us to keep it going, right? Because I'm also a part of this cult. 
right? This is a cult, dude. You're in a cult. You're in like a, a semi like religious cult. That's how it is. You worship the music, right? Basically what it comes down to, if some, some of you deify Jerry and that's not good, that's part of what killed him. Or that's what Bobby says. If you haven't read that article, it's pretty ridiculous where Bobby talks about how like you, you know, you turn, you, you turn Jerry into this kind of like Buddha like figure, God like figure, which he was not. He was a very flawed person. He was a person. He was just a man. He was a man that could play guitar good and sing okay, right? Those words weren't his. Those words were mostly Robert Hunter's. So if you're looking at Jerry for the way that the words were, you're, you're looking at the wrong guy, right? Um, but the way he played guitar was also something else. There was something, you know, like psychedelics do something to you in the way you play guitar. They do. There's, there's, a, there's an ebb and flow between you and the universe. Not to get too hippy-dippy, but there is when you're playing guitar. There is that kind of like give and take with the energy you know around you um so that also that also adds into what the allure is in into like putting him on a pedestal right but you know he'll like there there there's so many so many interviews with jerry where he's talked about like not digging on what he did at all like right so most of the time when I, when me personally when i get off stage i'm like this is the worst thing i've ever done in my life and i i should like you should cut my hands off type thing and it seems that Jerry also felt that way. Like he never really liked what he did on stage, like was never super satisfied with everything. And that doesn't deify him to me. That humanizes him. That endears him to me in a different way, right? I'm, I try to look at these people for being people and not like, yes, they wrote the, you know, some of the, the, the most contemporary, like these songs are, the songs that the Grateful Dead made seem to be contemporary classics, <laughs> Turner classic movies. No, they they seem to be the new standards, right? These are going to be standard music in a hundred years, two hundred years. It's already gone fifty, right? It'll it'll do another hundred and fifty. This music, because there's going to be people that keep churning this out, right? And I think that the the duty of us is to continue to to push it to new heights and and to make it do different stuff. And that's kind of like the the mission that I've taken with it. Now you have you have like. You have people within the scene that like do the do the Jerry thing, right? You've got you've got so many people. Of course, like you've got John Mayer right now. You've got Jod Cadlasic, who's in Melvin Seals and JGB, and was also in uh, Further. You got Zach Nugent, who was in, um, who was in sorry Melvin Seals and JGB, and now he's doing his own thing. And he's also I think he's gonna play with like Jerry's middle finger or something. Uh, you've got Warren Haynes, of course, I mentioned earlier. You've got Jeff Matson, who is now playing with Dark Star Orchestra. Jeff John Cadlasic played with them. Uh, you got Steve Kimmick, like from Zero, like that. That's that's another dude. Uh, you've got Tommy Hamilton, uh, and of course now you've got kind of like Billy Strings working his way in there. You've got uh, Josh Olkin from uh, Terrapin Flyer, who's like who's been doing it right. And a lot of these guys, they'll they'll do their own thing, but there are some guys who are like true students of Jerry that do it as close and almost as perfect as it can. And like the being a you know, being an instructor on on the internet, right? People will tell you so fast how you're wrong, which is fine. I'm I'm totally okay with being told that I'm wrong. Uh, you know, I'll admit it when I'm wrong. I'm fine with that. I'm a person. I'm I'm okay with making mistakes and being like, yeah. Uh, either I was a little lazy on this or, you know, I forgot or, yep, I fucked that up. Whoopsie doodle, right? I, it's fine. It's fine. It happens. And you can't really, you have to have a thick skin. Like, I've been in the music industry and homeless. You know, I was homeless for a long time. People will say some bad stuff to you. I've had some bad stuff said to me. So, like, comments on the internet don't really hurt me. But there, there are times when it gets super personal that you, like, really kind of look at them and you look at yourself um, there, there are moments definitely like when, when I've, you know, when I've done any kind of like tone video or certain lessons about something, people are like, your tone is trash. And it'll be like, you fucking suck, dude. Jerry's turning over in his grave. You should fucking quit right now. I had somebody told me that they puked in their mouth listening to me play. And that's fair. I'm not for everybody. Like just, just like the, all those people I named are someone's favorite, not Jerry. And they're also someone's least favorite, not Jerry. It's just how it goes. But there, there comes to this time, especially with anything that you're into, right? And I think that this might actually be kind of like the, the main idea of the thing is like when you get to a certain point of loving something so much that you will then, uh, you will then become like almost a religious zealot for it. 
it becomes this thing of like you are the you are the upholder you are the one who carries the torch right but it's not you it's all of us we all carry the torch we all do it in our own way right so there's this there's this aspect of you know like not feeding the fire the the whole point is that we're listening to fucking music you understand that this is about the music and not one person that that helped make the music like jerry was still just a part of it it was all just a part of it it wasn't this thing of like this um you know getting all up in arms about you know uh fulfilling jerry's legacy like i think we're all jerry's kids dude when it when it comes down to it so be like if you are rough on people on the internet for something that you know you think you or even in real life when you go to shows and stuff like you know you you can know it all but don't be a know-it-all like I'll always try to think a little bit before you speak right just try it try to let the the whole thing is be kind right so so why would you why would you come at people with any of that kind of energy of like oh, hoity-toity, nose up, like, I'm better than you in this way, or you didn't pay your dues because of this, or you're doing this wrong because of this. Why can't you just be stoked that people are doing the thing, right? Dead & Company might not be my favorite thing. Billy, Billy and the Kids might not be my favorite thing, but, like, I will always be an advocate for people going to see the music. I will always be an advocate of people playing the music. It doesn't matter if I get down on it or not. It's, the, it's still the same shit. It's like, I just like it when I play it. You know, just like all these other not Jerry's and all these other people that that play the music, they do it because they love it. They do it because they like it and they like the way they do it, right? So who are you to tell somebody that they're doing it wrong or they're enjoying it wrong, right? It's just, just be cool, be kind. That's, that's the main point, right? Is like, there is this toxic side of it, especially as it gets older, but we are the stewards, right? It's all of us. It's not just you. And it's not just you. It's not just you. It's all of us. We're all keeping it going. And yes, you need to have the historians. You need to have the people doing the doing the Lord's work and keeping it pristine, right? But you also have to have the people that are getting it dirty. You also have to have the people that will go out in the trenches and, and do the work to make it palatable for the generations to come. Like the songs are timeless, but you also, you know, you can change it up a bit to make it more current, make it a little bit more danceable, listenable, whatever. Whatever, you can do what you want with it. That's the whole thing. As soon as it's outside of the band, it's yours. It's the world. It doesn't belong to them, and it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to everybody. So that whole idea of gatekeeping, oh, this person can't listen to it because of this, or you shouldn't like it because of this reason why you like it. Like, If people like the Grateful Dead's music because of John Mayer, who cares? They like the music. They'll they'll eventually find, you know, the old album versions or some old live versions looking up a song and they might like it, but at least they'll understand the context, right? It's the same with anybody listening to like a Billy Strings cover or like a random cover online of like some country band covering Friend of the Devil or Loser or whatever. If someone finds Lyle Lovett's Friend of the Devil and that's how they get into the dead, it doesn't matter. They got here. So like the, you know, the, the cult grows no matter what, but it's like, do you want to be a cool cult or you want to be a shitty cult? You got to choose, right? You, you can't be, you can't be this crazy. Like you can't do that. You can't just be crazy. Don't be crazy guys. Remember the whole rule is don't be a dick. That's the rule here on the channel, but the rule in life is don't, don't be a dick. You don't have to, you don't have to. So be cool. Like, I, I hope the discussion wasn't fucking terrible, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting idea, right? That like, even, even though we, we just love something so much and you're just trying to get across the point that you love it, but it's a, it's okay. It's okay. Not one of us loves it the most. You're not ever going to be the guy that loves it the most. You're never going to be the guy that knows the most about it. You're never going to be the guy who's the best at playing Jerry. You're never going to be the guy with the perfect Jerry tone. Unless you go to Waldo or the Jerry tone store. And they'll they'll set you up and it'll be the real, the real deal. But it's also super expensive to have the exact thing that Jerry had, right? So I think it's whatever you can afford and whatever feels good. So don't shame people for, for how they experience stuff. Don't shame people for how they express themselves. It's not cool, right? The, the whole idea is that this is a place for everybody, no matter what. Because, like, I found this in some of the darkest fucking periods of my life, and it helped me. So why wouldn't you want that for other people? Why wouldn't you want other people to experience the love of it? Because that's what it's about. It's about the music. It's not about you, bitch. It's about the music. It's about serving the songs. It's about, you know, stewarding the music. Not, not the people. They're going to die. We're all going to die. And that's okay, but the I mean the music still lives on, so it's just like and also your fucking internet comments live on, bitch. So it's like think about that shit too. 
right? There's a, there's a way to do stuff that doesn't fucking leave a path of destruction, right? You can be, you can be better. You can be a better person, right? Um, I wanted to end this off with uh, a little interview uh, of Jerry. So this was in rockandrollgarage.com, <laughs> October 17th, 2020. So this is obviously from an old, because, you know, Jerry, didn't, Jerry died in 95. So there's this interesting um, interview. So these are just questions taken from an interview with Jerry. All right, so this is how I'm, gonna, I'm basically just going to read you this whole article. Right? All right, here we go. When asked a comment about that most people, after experiencing the Grateful Dead, either love them or hate them, Jerry Garcia said, well, that seems pretty cut and dry. I'm aware of that phenomenon, I guess. What happens is that someone turns their friends on to us in the same spirit or sense that they would turn their friends on to pot, that they turn them on because they have a good experience and that they have a good time. It used to be real frustrating. I've talked to fans about it who have said, Jesus, I invited 20 of my friends to this and you played awful. Right? Isn't that fun to hear that like, he's like, oh shit, you had expectations, my bad. That's how I feel like how I'm going to feel when people comment on this. I thought I was getting a lesson this week and I'm just getting this bullshit. You just fucking sitting and talking. About... That's what you sound like. And you're the problem. <laughs> that stuff used to happen to us all the time. We've gotten to be a lot more consistent. Now those people can bring their friends at the very worst. They'll get a nice professional show. <laughs> But I'm aware of that mechanism. The thing is that it's an ongoing process. Our audience now has a very large number of 15, 16, and 17-year-olds, right? And that's the thing. It's just going to keep happening. So don't fight it. Don't fight the future. It's going to happen. There are kids who are obviously not from our generation, but are every bit as enthusiastic about what we did as any of our audiences have ever been. Our audience is larger now than it's ever been. It's more vital now than ever. It's been what's happening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's more vital now than it's ever been, and we're happening. I love that. We're happening. Do you relate to an audience of 15 and 16-year-olds today the same way you related to the kids that came to see the band in the 60s when you were a lot closer to that age yourself? Sure, because they're the same kind of people. They're people that can dig what we're doing, and it's hard not to like someone who likes what you do. Of course. Of course you like people that like what you do. But I guarantee you that it's, it's like, what y'all motherfuckers been doing? How y'all been running around? Papa Jerry would shake his head. He'd be like, nah. And I also don't like it when people speak for dead people, and I'm sorry I did that. <laughs> it's not fun when people speak for dead people because, like, they're dead. You don't know what they would do or how they would act. Uh, how do you feel about the hardcore dead fanatics who follow your band on a 25-city tour? Do you think that's a healthy thing to do? Well, it's obviously very important to them. <laughs> And more than that, it's giving them an adventure. Okay. They have stories to tell. Like, remember that time we had to go all the way to Colorado and we had to hitchhike the last 400 miles because the VW broke down in Kansas or something like that? You know what I mean? Uh, that's giving them a whole common group of experiences which they can talk about. For a lot of people, going to Grateful Dead concerts is like bumping into a bunch of old friends. See, it's the community. It's the idea. It's the, the community forms around the music. And then from there, you just have people that try to like control it from within when, when there is no, you're not the leader. This isn't follow the leader. Just fucking chill out. Uh, there's a vast network of deadheads. They're kind of like people who have come to know and recognize each other and it's support. Um, sometimes a person can find a ride across the country with a deadhead or, or stay over at somebody's house or any of that. So that seems to function pretty well for them. It is true. It means like if you've got like a steely on your car and the other person has a steely on the car, there's like a, yep, yeah, I'll probably do anything for you for the most part, unless you know, you're fucking terrible. <laughs> Isn't it possible though, that some people might put so much of themselves into the dead experience all the time that they lost a part of themselves in the process. Oh, for sure. I know I have. Jerry said that. And I say that. <laughs> So I'm sure it's possible, but our commitment to the idea is as deep as the most crazed deadheads. So I don't feel as though we're burning anybody on that level. We continue to do what we're doing. Okay, so see, it's like I vibe with that too because it's like I'm, I've am i kind of signed up for this for life. I've kind of signed up to play this music for forever. Um, and there's there's something to that that's like, oh, I'm just as, I'm just as bad. I'm just as crazy because like I'll always prefer the way I do it to another because that's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I like the way I do it you know, better than, because if I liked someone else's way of doing it better than I did it, I just wouldn't do it. Does that make sense? So it's like, I already kind of come at it with this, not, not a level of deserving, but it's like, that's what artists do. It's like, I, you know, it's like it, it connects me, me in a way and it comes through me in a way that it seems to vibe with other people. So I'm going to keep doing it. 
right? And that's kind of like the whole the the whole reason behind the whole thing, right? And I'm sure that that's why all these other guys have like, you know, these people have like dedicated their lives to playing this music for you, right? It's weird, right? It's a strange thing to come across that this hasn't happened before. There's so, so many other like tribute acts and stuff, but it is not to the level of any dead tribute. Like any little city you go to, there's a dead tribute and people show the fuck out for them. It's crazy. It's crazy the kind of dedication on both ends of this. People give their lives to this stuff. And it's also because again, it's 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 like a like its own little cult without a the 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 music is the deity, if that makes sense. Like the, the each each song itself is like its own little contained universe. This is somewhat related. It seems there are two basic types of deadheads in a given audience. There's the one who just goes to get high and dance around and have a good time, and the one who goes to analyze, like by saying, well, that guitar solo wasn't quite as good as the one he did in Boston in 73, but, right, the scholarly approach, the students of Grateful Dead music. I'm looking at all of you. I'm looking at all of you. You know, it's like, it's like you know, I'm not... I'm guilty of it too. I think we all are. It's like any of those like reaction videos where I've been like, ah, boo to that or boo to this. It's like, they're still doing it. I'm still really stoked that people are doing it. So, you know, my bad. I love y'all. Uh, if you were a member of the Grateful Dead audience instead of the stage, which type do you think you'd be? And Jerry says, I could go both ways. I bet you did go both ways, you little rat dog, you. There was a time in my life when I was one of those guys who would walk around with a tape recorder. I used to follow around bluegrass bands and record them. I was of the analytical bent. I was a comparer. This show was better than that. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, are you listening? Are you listening? Okay. <laughs> but that was sort of a different me. Mm, I understand both points of view. I understand the sheer joy of being there, even if the music is not the best possible performance. And also, there are those times when it gets lucky, it gets special. Those are worth waiting around for. Those are the glue that holds us together. Our glue on particle. The possibility that something exceptional will happen musically. Because it's you never know, especially when you're going into a new venue on a different night and like you're either tired or you're worn out or you're excited or whatever, or you're too high or you're not high enough. There's so many things that can add into it either being magical or what you think is garbage. And you never know which one it's going to be. You could have everything perfectly planned and then you get in there, you set up and you start to play and everything is just off. It's the worst it's ever been. But then the next night you didn't practice at all and it's the best show you've ever played. You never know. How have the audiences changed the most over the years? They've gotten bigger, that's for sure. But for us, surprisingly, they haven't changed too much. They respond similarly. The Grateful Dead audience is kind of like the Grateful Dead audience no matter what and no matter where either. That's another interesting phenomenon. European Grateful Dead audiences are not that much different from American Grateful Dead audiences. Right? So it's like everywhere you go, there you are. And the deadheads are always the same. Like we're, You're all very beautiful people. But I also like to tell people that like... Deadheads are not necessarily hippies. No, there's 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 definitely a a dark side to the whole thing, and there's there's an aspect of it that I didn't even touch on. There's like a whole like almost cartel aspect to the Grateful Dead culture that I I don't even necessarily want to talk about in this video. What I was mostly talking about was like the toxic fandom and that that idea of like that gatekeeping, that uh, that Nazi ish kind of behavior about something you truly hold dearly, which is fine, but like. Don't make that shit other people's problem. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, I've been I've been seeing this stuff on almost every video I've made. There's always somebody talking shit, and it's fine. That's your opinion. That's that's what this whole public forum is for, right? Uh, but like, voice your opinion without attacking people. This this goes. You can attack me. I don't give a fuck. But this this goes like just a, a little bit of advice for going out in the world. Again, just try to try to be cool. Get, you can you can tell you can state your opinion without pissing people off. Unless you want to, and then just just know that you're a dick, right? Just know that you're not being cool. I know that that's not very fam. Fam? That's not very fam, bro. You know what I mean? Try to be good family. We're a family, right? The whole, the whole aspect of it is, the whole idea is family. So, like, I know that we're going to have our tiffs and stuff, but, like, it's the music. So, again, it's not about you, not about me. It's the music. So remember to be good. Remember to be good. We're going to wrap this up. I guess you're definitely going to tell me what you think in the comments. So please, let's let's fucking talk about it. You know what I mean? Uh, we also kind of talked about this a little bit on the You Killed Jerry Garcia podcast. So you can go watch that too. 
bunch of other stuff on the channel, please go check out, you know, you can go check out the merch at realbird.company.site. You can order my guitar course, Golden Road guitar course. You can do that. The, you know, the ways to do that is down in the description. You can donate directly to the channel. Uh, you can join our Patreon. There's a ton of content over on our Patreon that's really fun and really cool, really slick, really neat, fun stuff. Okay, so remember to be good, right? That's the whole idea is that just be be cool, baby. Be cool. What's Fonzie like? Cool. Okay, I love you. Mwah.